Another viewer question in here that's been addressed to Jeff. Uh, Jeff, how do you coordinate software upgrades across multiple vendors in an automated fashion? For example, when a change in the DU requires an adjustment in the RU for it to be properly integrated. Yeah, so all of the, the automations are uh, actually managed through uh, blueprints and templates that are then, it, it's very much, we have a concept, uh, it, it's something that's been in the, uh, the industry forever called a MOP. So whenever you do a, anything to a network, you have a method of procedure that actually was rooted in, in NASA's uh, processors. Uh, you test the MOP and then traditionally you would take that MOP and a human would execute the steps in that MOP. Uh, we have a, uh, the same concept called an RMOP, where we, uh, rather than a human doing it, we have a software program that uh, is then written, tested, guaranteed it works, and then when it's required to be executed, the, the RMOP is the one that actually runs. Now, in our system that, that manages this, and, and one maybe key factor we can bring up in answering this question, one aspect we haven't touched on at all, how important it is to have governance around automation. So when you've got hundreds to thousands of these automation scripts, you need to make sure that you are logging when these automation scripts run, and you can go back and introspect uh, on all of the operations in case there are problems anywhere. So when these uh, arm ops run to do a, a massive network upgrade, they run in parallel. That's another massive advantage. Each, each automation that we execute actually spins up a new container in a cluster. It can run in parallel thousands of times to the others, which means that we can actually perform these upgrades uh, in a much more rapid fashion versus a, a traditional mechanism and process. But I can't stress enough, actually, that lifecycle management of automation programs is absolutely key because in the example I've just described, with, you know, with that power comes great responsibility. Uh, if, if there's weakness in your supply chain or if you haven't tested it appropriately, then it, it also can cause damage on a larger scale. So having that governance process is part of the automation center of excellence that we introduced. Great, strong message. Thank you, Jeff. Um, right, we've got time for one final question today, and it's a big one. I'm going to ask it to all of you. Where do you see the greatest potential for the adoption of automation? Are there specific network operational domains or are there any real world examples you can give us? Well, let's start by asking Maury this one. Maury. Oh, it's my honor to be the first to answer these big questions. Uh, I would like to highlight the, the good uh, histories and the records we did with the partners. Um, starting from, the, I think, uh, if people still remember the Cascade Lake, which is the second generation as a young SP, and then uh, we're still offering that to the operators and network partners. And then I'll cross the third gen, I select fourth gen, Sapphire Rapid and incoming, MR Rapid as well on the fifth gen. Uh, I want to highlight this chance here is that actually operators, they, they would like to have the very reliable, tested, certified uh, solutions from the Rakuten Symphony. But we still need to have a good spectrum of the hardware abilities long enough uh, to keep the operators very uh, trusted uh, provide services from Supermicro. And to this level, um, you can imagine when you change a different uh, technology inside there, there will be not just a validation from the software side. From the hardware design perspective, we want to keep it always in the same form factor systems design. And then uh, keep those uh, board control management interface, including like Redfish and others, allow those exporters able to be aligned well, instead of we always give them a surprise like we add some sensors without telling a software a strong partner like Work 10 Symphony. So this conversation is a long journey and then uh, we work efficiently together. And to make these uh, efforts become seamless, 
uh, seamlessly connected together is the key. And how a provider like Supermicro, our, our job is loyal to uh, the customers, how to make sure we can create values instead of uh, going extra steps to do other things. So uh, we are very focused here and then to make uh, long abilities for the telco industry. Open run is just a beginning journey. And then VRAN definitely also could be there later, including going all up the way to the core and telco cloud. So we have all the spectrums like I described in the very beginning, and then uh, we will carefully uh, step uh, one by one into the proper segments with the Rakuten Symphony and Intel technology as well. Thank you very much, Maury. And Caroline, what's your thoughts on the, uh, the potential for network automation? Open RAN is, is, is just the beginning. Uh, it is a great proof ground. We are uh, honing our skills here and led by uh, Rakuten Symphony, giving us the, the problem statements, for, you know, pushing us to solve those issues. But I think that they, well, as we progress on this, really when I look forward into the next step of 5G, 5G events, uh, as we go into offering network slides, going into the enterprise, this skill set becomes very valuable. And, and Rakuta already announced their uh, intention of getting into, actually announced an uh, agreement uh, with different, uh, offering different uh, private networks. I think what we have done so here has a great potential to really open up when we go into a, the IT and OT world, combining telco to IT and OT. So automation, telemetry, uh, sustainability, security become just such a must-have factors. Indeed they do. Thank you, Caroline. And Jeff, final word today from you. Yeah, it's a great question. I think uh, it's uh, it comes f uh, full circle from where we started. Uh, so automation, I think, exists in a localized, domain-specific way. I think the the big opportunity that now we move into is cross-domain automation. And with that, it's a journey of a, a million wins, I think is the best way to approach it. A simple example I, uh, that I can save significant amounts of operational hours. So there's a problem uh, that happens in a network, either it's detected through telemetry data or KPI uh, performance data or uh, alarms coming in through fault management. All of that is automatically correlated into a potential resolution that then is allocated to the right team based on all of the information that was actually received. And if it can be allocated to the right team, that right team then that gets surfaced to a, a screen that says, we've seen this problem 10 times before, we've resolved it using this automation script. Do you want to make this a closed loop activity? And if you click that checkbox, then it doesn't actually surface to a human anymore. The system just takes care of it. Key inside that is that continuously, all trouble tickets are always created, logged for, again, historical attribution and uh, ability to, to understand what the system has actually done. Compare that to the traditional world, maybe a ticket gets raised, it goes to a radio team. The radio team says, I don't think it's my problem. It goes to a transmissions team. It goes to a core team. Uh, and finally, in days to, to weeks, you might find a resolution to that. Uh, so one, one closing remark maybe to say about automation is, is the actual explicit surfacing of all of the uh, existing knowledge inside a network operator into a, a known database that then you can use to run, but also you can re use to run AI models on as well. Thank you very much, Jeff, and a great set of answers to our final question, but we must leave it there. Thank you all for taking part in our discussion today. Now, if you still have questions, then please keep sending them in and we will forward them to our guests after the show. And don't forget to take part in our poll. It's very quick, just a one question. So make sure that you have your say. And for more information on the unique collaboration between these three companies, then please visit symphony.rakutan.com and navigate your way to the partner page. Alternatively, just click one of the links in the text below this video. For now though, thank you for watching.
and goodbye.